you very much, Carol. Um, I'm going to do a brief reading because I actually find it way more interesting to discuss things. So uh, I'll, I'll do a short reading, then Carol and I will have an on stage interview, and then hopefully you will get engaged and you'll ask questions of either of us and uh, be the better for it. Um, so a short reading. Uh, the main character is Henry. Henry is a writer. He receives letters from readers. And one day, he receives a very thick package, which includes a short story, actually a novella by Gustave Flaubert, called The Legend of St. Julian Hospitator. And several sections have been very, very carefully highlighted. And also, there is an extract of a play. And a little note, finally, that says, you know, I like your last book, I Need Your Help. And what I'll read is this brief extract of the play. The novel has several fragments of this play in it, elements of which, um, even if I read them to you and you wouldn't get them, don't worry, you wouldn't get them anymore if you read the book. They are just fragments and you must, they're like little peepholes. You, you're supposed to look through them and see something beyond that. Anyway, this is the first extract that Henry the writer receives. There's two characters, Virgil and Beatrice, so I'll read both, uh, both voices. Virgil and Beatrice are sitting at the foot of the tree. They are looking out blankly. Silence. Virgil, what I'd give for a pear. Beatrice, a pear. Virgil, yes, a ripe and juicy one. Pause. Beatrice, I've never had a pear. Virgil, what? Beatrice, in fact, I don't think I've ever set eyes on one. Virgil, how's that possible? It's a common fruit. Beatrice, my parents were always eating apples and carrots. I guess they didn't like pears. Virgil, the pears are so good. There's a pear tree right around here. Virgil looks around. Beatrice, describe a pear for me. What is a pear like? Virgil, settling back. I can try. Let's see. To start with, a pear has an unusual shape. It's round and fat on the bottom, but tapered on top. Beatrice, like a gourd. Virgil, a gourd? You know gourds, but you don't know pears? How odd the things we know and don't. At any rate, no. A pear is smaller than an average gourd, and its shape is more pleasing to the eye. A pear becomes tapered in a symmetrical way, its upper half sitting straight and centered atop its lower half. Can you see what I mean? Beatrice, I think so. Virgil, let's start with the bottom half. Can you imagine a fruit that is round and fat? Beatrice, like an apple. Virgil, mm, not quite. If you look at an apple with your mind's eye, you will notice that the girth of the apple is at its widest, either in the middle of the fruit or in the top third. Isn't that so? Beatrice, you're right. A pear is not like that? Virgil, no. You must imagine an apple that is at its widest in the bottom third. Beatrice, I can see it. Virgil, but we must not push that comparison too far. The bottom of a pear is not like an apple's. Beatrice, no? Virgil, no. Most apples sit on their buttocks, so to speak, on a circular ridge or on four or five points that keep them from falling over. Past the buttocks, a little ways up, they would be the anus of the fruit if the fruit were a beast. Beatrice, I see precisely what you mean. Well, Virgil, well, a pear is not like that. A pear has no buttocks. Its bottom is round. Beatrice, so how does it stay up? Virgil, it doesn't. A pear either dangles from a tree or lies on its side. Beatrice, as clumsy as an egg. Virgil, there's something else about the bottom of a pear. Most pears do not have those vertical grooves that some apples have. Most pears have smooth, round, even bottoms. Beatrice, how enchanting. Virgil, it certainly is. Now, let us move north, past our fruity equator. Beatrice, I'm following you. Virgil, there comes this tapering I was telling you about. Beatrice, I can't quite see it. Does the fruit come to a point? Is it shaped like a cone? Virgil, no. Imagine the tip of a banana. Beatrice, which tip? Virgil, well, the end tip, the one you hold in your hand when you're eating one. Beatrice, what kind of banana? There are hundreds of varieties. Virgil, are there? Beatrice, yes. Some are as small as fat fingers, others are real clubs, and their shapes vary too, as do their taste. Virgil, I mean the regular yellow ones that taste really good. Beatrice, ah, the common banana, 
M. sapientum. You probably have the Gros Michel variety in mind. Virgil, I'm impressed. Beatrice, I know bananas. Virgil, better than a monkey. Now, take the end tip of a common banana then and place it on top of an apple, taking into account the differences between apples and pears that I've just described. Beatrice, an interesting graft. Virgil, now, make those lines smoother, gentler. Let the banana flare out in a friendly way as it merges into the apple. Can you see it? Beatrice, I believe I can. Virgil, one last detail. At the very top of this apple-banana composite, add a surprisingly tough stalk, a real tree trunk of a stalk. There. You have an approximation of a pear. Beatrice, a pear sounds like a beautiful fruit. Virgil, it is. In color, commonly, a pear is yellow with black spots. Beatrice, like a banana again. Virgil, no, not at all. A pear isn't yellow in so bright, lusterless, and opaque a way. It's a paler, translucent yellow, moving towards beige, but not creamy, more watery, approaching the visual texture of a watercolor wash, and the spots are sometimes brown. Beatrice, how are the spots distributed? Virgil, well, not like the spots on a leopard. It's more a matter of areas of shadowing than of real spots, depending on the degree of maturity of the pear. By the way, a ripe pear bruises easily, so it must be handled with care. Beatrice, of course. Virgil, now the skin. It's a peculiar skin, the pears, hard to describe. We were speaking of apples and bananas. Beatrice, yes. Virgil, they have smooth, slippery skins. Beatrice, they do. Virgil, a pear does not have so smooth or slippery a skin. Beatrice, really? Virgil, it is so. A pear has a rougher skin. Beatrice, like an avocado's. Virgil, mm, no. But since you mentioned avocados, a pear is somewhat shaped like an avocado, although the bottom of a pear is usually plumper. Beatrice, fascinating. Virgil, and a pear becomes thinner in its top half in a more pronounced way than an avocado does. Nonetheless, the two fruits are more or less similar in form. Beatrice, I see the shape clearly. Virgil, but you cannot compare their skins. An avocado's skin is as warty as a toad's. An avocado looks like a vegetable with leprosy. The pear is characterized by a thin roughness, delicate and interesting to the touch. If you can magnify it a hundred times, do you know what it would sound like, the sound of fingertips running over the skin of a dry pear? Beatrice, what? Virgil, it would sound like the diamond of a record player entering a groove. That same dancing crackle, like the burning of the driest, lightest kindling. Beatrice, a pear is surely the finest fruit in the world. Virgil, it is, it is. That's the skin of a pear for you. Beatrice, can one eat it? Virgil, of course. We're not talking here of the waxy, thuggish skin of an orange. The skin of a pear is soft and yielding when ripe. Beatrice, and what does a pear taste like? Virgil, wait. You must smell it first. A ripe pear breathes a fragrance that is watery and subtle, its power lying in the lightness of its impression upon the olfactory sense. Can you imagine the smell of nutmeg or cinnamon? Beatrice, I can. Virgil, the smell of a ripe pear has the same effect on the mind as these aromatic spices. The mind is arrested, spellbound, and a thousand and one memories and associations are thrown up as the mind burrows deep to understand the allure of this beguiling smell, which it never comes to understand, by the way. Beatrice, but how does it taste? I can't wait any longer. Virgil, a ripe pear overflows with sweet juiciness. Beatrice, oh, that sounds good. Virgil, slice a pear and you will find that its flesh is incandescent white. It glows with inner light. Those who carry a knife and a pear are never afraid of the dark.